Let me talk about Bezier curves, which are going to be a really important tool for our group project. It's a specific way to make curves somewhat to order. Uh, first of all, let me just remind you that we've got some wonderful rules for derivatives and like velocity uh, vectors. Um, if I take d by dt of, say, like t times the vector 2, 3, 1, there's a couple of ways to do that. One of the ways is first do the algebra. That's 2t, so that doesn't look like a t, 3t, t. And then the derivative of any vector valued function, the velocity of a curve, if you will, is just the derivative of each part. Okay, But there's a slicker way to do this, is to think, well, this is just some constant vector. Let's just call that a, 2, 3, 1. And so this is the derivative of a scalar function times that vector. And one of the rules for derivatives is this is just a constant. It's a complicated object in terms of the geometry. It's a vector. But in terms of calculus, it's simple. It's a constant. Constant times anything, that just basically comes out. Okay, So it's going to be just derivative of t times that a. Well, that's just 1 times a. And indeed, that's this guy. Okay. Similarly, if this had been a t squared, okay, we would have taken the derivative of the t squareds, and we would have gotten something a little more complicated, 4t, 6t, 2t. But here, we don't have to change as much. That's just t squared, and this is just 2t. And indeed, this is just 2t times that constant vector a. So I want to remind you that we can have this kind of technology, and we're all, we can. This could be a variable function as well, in which case we have a more complicated product rule. But we're always going to use it where this is a constant vector, and then times some scalar function. So, after that prep, algebraic prep, I want to talk about the idea of Bezier curves. I want to create a curve that starts at a certain point, and as usual, we're going to promote. Pr we're going to think about them geometrically as points, but we're going to manipulate them as vectors. So really. We've got an origin somewhere, and really all of these guys are kind of vectors coming out of the origin. But let's not worry about that. Okay, So we're going to write it as a point, but call it R0, a vector. And then I want it to go from R0, and in a minute you'll see why I call this R3. I want it to go towards R3. Well, the simplest curve would just be a straight line, just zoop, like that. That's boring, Okay, and it's not too hard to create a straight line. But we want a, a curve, and we want to be able to control it. Well, a nice way to control the curve is to not only talk about where it starts and ends, but what direction it's going in as it comes out of the starting point, and what direction it's coming from as it goes to the ending point. Let me make that more, more clear. Let me give another point. I'm going to call that R1. And I'm going to make sure that the curve, I want to create a curve that starts out in the direction from R0 to R1. So there's a vector here. And I want the velocity vector of my uh, curve to be parallel to that. Maybe not exactly that. We'll see if, if we can make it exactly that as it starts out. But basically, it goes out in that direction, and then it starts to curve, maybe right away. But it's going out from that point towards R1, and then it starts to curve. Well, symmetrically, what I can do is have another point, R2. And what I can do is I can have the, the vector here. It's going to be most symmetrical if that's the direction it's coming from as it comes into R3. So I want to create a curve that as it goes into R3, it's as if it had been coming from R2. Okay, so it's going to be this vector. It's coming along this vector, going from R2 to R3. So it's starting at R0, ending at R3, going out towards R1, and coming in as if it has been coming from R2. Okay, so let me actually give you a little uh, interactive demo here. Okay, so this is a website. This is on GitHub, um, a nice little interactive demo. So here's the, they, they have them P1. I had them as vectors because it fits more with our terminology. They they have P1 through P4, and I like doing 0 through 3. Um, so they have P1 through P, P1, P2, P3, and P4. The P1 and P4 are the points, the actual starting and end points of the curve. But P2, that's another control point. It's something you don't almost ever expect to be on the curve, but you can see that as I move that around, the curve is always still tangent to that line P1, P2 as it starts out from P1. And then the P3 controls the direction it goes into P4. And you can see, I can get a pretty good variety of shapes with this. Now, I can't get a super complicated shape. It's not supposed to produce a super complicated shape. It's never going to have like lots and lots of wiggles in between. But it's a relatively smooth, nice shape that has these properties. So how do we do that algebraically?
Okay, I will show you. What we do is we create a curve, r of t, and it's going to be a cubic function of t. Um, it can be fun to derive this from first principles, and I'll refer you to the Wikipedia page on Bezier curve, because they have a lot of good stuff on that page. And turns out this gives us exactly the properties that we want. Okay, So we can check those properties. It's a great exercise in vector algebra. First of all, oh yeah, and then 0, a t is going from 0 to 1. Okay, We don't have to use this as our parameter, but this is the, st the very standard parameterization of a curve going from 0 to 1, and it's going to work out very nicely here. So we'd like to know that r0 is the starting point of the curve. It should be r0. I shouldn't have erased my picture. Okay, uh, I don't know if this is a really realistic Bezier. Okay, so here's R0. Here's R1. Here's R3. And maybe right here is R2. Okay, R of 0, that's easy to calculate. All these guys have a T in them, so they die. And this is just 1. Oh, yeah, it's R sub R of 1. We're not taking velocities or anything yet. Now, all these guys have a 1 minus t in them. They all die when t equals 1. Oh, this is the one thing that lives, and it's r3. So as advertised, it starts at, at r0 and ends at r3. Now, more interesting is the derivative. Well, let's take the derivative here. So this is where we can use the fact that these are just constant vectors. They're just going to stay along for the ride, just like any con multiplicative constant does in calculus. And I'm going to take the derivative of that. OK, so 3 times 1 minus t squared, ooh, times a minus 1 with a chain rule, times r0. Plus, ooh, we got a little product rule here. Okay, 3 times the quantity. Actually, let me give some room. 3 times the quantity. Well, derivative of t is 1. 1 minus t squared. And then plus t left alone times 2 times 1 minus t. Ooh, with the minus sign again. So that's going to be minus. All times r1. We'll simplify that in a minute. Plus 3, again quantity, let's see, 2t times 1 minus t, and then plus t squared, derivative 1 minus t, okay, that's just plain minus 1, times r2, and then this is easiest one, plus 3t squared r3. Okay, so let me see, I still want that formula up there, let me squeeze it in here. Okay, so what's r prime of 0? Well, notice that there's a lot. Oh, yeah, I was going to simplify these guys. Actually, so let's simplify it one more time. OK, so this doesn't simplify too much. Minus 3, 1 minus t squared r naught. And then plus, now notice this ha still has a 1 minus t factor in it. So it's 3, 1 minus t. And then what's left over is a 1 minus t minus 2t. So it's 1 minus 3t. And that's times r1. And then this guy has a t factor in it and a 3. If you factor out a t, this is a t, not a plus. OK, I know I'm being sloppy. So you factored out the 3 and the t, you've got a 2 minus 3t times r2, and then plus 3t squared r3. OK, so I can now erase this. r prime of 0. Well, let's see. This guy had a factor of t, this guy had a factor of t. So they die. So it only has to do with r0 and r1. That's good, because that's the, supposed to be the stuff about the start of the curve. And it's minus 3 r0. And then here, if t is 0, this is 1. This is 1. Oh, plus 3 r1. So that's 3 times the vector r1 minus r0. Remember, if I'm thinking of vectors as representing points and I subtract them, that's exactly the separation vector between r0 and r1. R so that's just this vector. And it happens to come out with a factor of 3. Um, but it's just nice to have this very, um, this formula, the 1, 3, 3, 1 pattern is very reminiscent of like Pascal's triangle. It turns out that it works very nicely when you have that 3. OK, so and in any case, we just wanted it to be parallel, to be in the right direction. Uh, r prime of 1. Now the 1 minus t guys die. Anything with a factor of 1 minus t dies. Here. Uh, this is 3 
times, ooh, minus 1, you get minus 3r2, and then plus 3r3. Voila, this is 3 times the separation vector, r3 minus r2. And that's exactly this vector. And going in the correct direction, remember this is it's supposed to be come, as if it came from r2. Okay, So um, that tells us that this is a relatively simple formula. It's just a bunch of constants times cubics in t that gives us this nice behavior. Um, and it's because it's, it's such a nice simple formula, it's not going to produce something really wacky um, as we go from one point to the other and have the correct directions.